This is Chicago, the Windy City. Shy town the city of big shoulders. Hey, you call it whatever you want. Me? I call it home. Chicago is not what this story is about, though. Chicago is where this story takes place. Don't worry, man. You're going to be just fine. Marines do not die. Not dying today. Not today. My name is Joe Kelly, and I'm not only a cop, but I work with an elite hostage rescue team. In my job, there is no such thing as a normal day at work. Thanks. No, thank you. You got patient stable. We got to go. move them. Get them out of here. Okay. Get the doors. Make a hole, people. Make a hole. Every day and situation is different. And this day was no exception. It was my wife's birthday, and I had put in for this day off a while ago. You really outdid yourself. Thank you. Oh, it could not have been a more perfect day. Now you know I don't need a great deal. I have you and the kids, and those are the greatest gifts of all. With my crazy schedule, all the ups and downs that we've been through, if I had to choose over again, you would still be the one I'd want by my side to share every day of my life with. You're my soulmate, my love, my best friend forever. You're my precious and beautiful wife. I love you, Hannah. Happy birthday. Megan, I want to know my Sure, Josh, that, that's fine. We can do that. Yeah. Uh, um, can we pick this conversation up later? I uh, hope so. Me too. But right now, we are in parent mode. Right. Uh, parents now, romance later. Yeah. Got it. Don't, don't move. Be right back. Don't, okay. Don't, don't move. Right. Whatever it is, the answer is no. Find somebody else. It's my wife's birthday. It's me, my wife, and kids all weekend. What part of that wasn't clear when I put in for a day off? Hello to you too, Joe. Okay, I'm gonna stop the story right here to fill you in on a little something. You know how there's that stereotype that all the Irish in Chicago are related and they're all cops and firefighters? Well, with my family, that's absolutely true. Ladies and gentlemen, meet my Uncle Frank. Sergeant Francis J. Finch, Irish, Catholic, and Democrat, been married to my aunt Jennifer for 20 years. Four sons, three of which are police officers. The fourth is a firefighter. And 12 grandchildren. Sorry, pal, you need it on this one. Got a guy who lost his job and he took his boss and his co-workers hostage. This guy's not playing games. Cap recommended you because you're the best. When do you think we can expect you out here? Send the full details to my phone. I'll be there when I can. Okay, we'll keep this guy contained until you get here. Thanks. No words. I know who you were and what you did for a living when I married you. You're just lucky that I love you and that I understand. One exception. What's that? Come back to us when it's over. I plan on it. Bye. up at the station later, you idiot. It's a crime scene. Hey. Hey, hey. don't you ever take a day off? Well, I was on a day off with my wife and kids. Oh. I called in here. Yeah, sorry about that. It's Weber. He's got political aspirations. He's making this into a whole media circus. What a shock. We look like we're wound up for more. Yeah. Keep the media back. We don't want anybody getting spoked and more scared than they need to be, all right? You got it, folks. Keep these folks under control, all right? You got it. I'm going in. All right. It's about saving lives. I thought. Me too. Another day in paradise. I hear you. Calvary's here, boss. Yeah? Rough morning, man? That's what I hear. Rally the troops. I'll be with you guys in a second. All right, we'll do. Hey, man. We've got to get the wives and kids together. It's a spot. We need a nice grill. We're dying to use it. Yeah, bro, we do. All right, we'll come by. All right. His name is Christopher Simmons. He lost his job. So instead of going down to the unemployment office, the guy goes out and gets a gun in his car. Nice. He's got hostages held. He's agreed to let one go if we bring someone in. 
That's where you come in, crime doctor. Yeah, I figured it was on deck. All right. You're up. Oh, great. Hello? Do you think this is a game? No, Mr. Simmons, no one's playing games with you. Captain Dan here says you agreed to let someone go. I need you to keep your word, Mr. Simmons. I'm on my way in. Everybody go to channel four. You guys are gonna go through the middle when I call it. SWAT is roof and basement. We got the center. Let's roll out, guys. I'm going in. It's all right. You're going to need a home to see I your son. Get home. It's all right. <laughs> Let go of the girl. Slow down, Chris. Oh, so I'm Chris now. You called me Mr. Simmons over the phone. Okay. No problem, Mr. Simmons. I understand a need for respect. You're just telling me what I want to hear. Let go of the girl. Fine. Come on. Step out. Come on. Hurry up. Turn around. Walk backwards for me. Just see Wait a second. Go slow. Right now, Mr. Simmons, you may be charged with the hostages. You pull that trigger, you get charged with more. Doesn't matter. My life's screwed anyway. It's not necessarily true. Shut up. A guy like you will say anything to control a guy like me. Well, I hate to break it to you, but that's entirely untrue. I say whatever I want, and you can take it or leave it. But the one thing you won't ever catch me doing is lying. Let her go, Mr. Simmons. You still have eight others here. Make it nine. I'm not your hostage. I will use this gun. You mean like that? No. My bullets hit flesh. <laughs> really? You could have just shot me right there. I raised my gun. True, sure. But I don't want to kill you, just like you don't want to kill her. Well, if you're not a liar, you certainly have a talent for inventing things. You don't know what's in my mind! Buddy, I've dealt with men like you for 17 years. What's in your mind right now is rage, a feeling of being disrespected, the need for power. You don't have a criminal record, which means right now you're at a boiling point. Could have been brewing for five years, maybe five weeks, maybe your whole damn life. But right now, you're beyond your rational safety zone because you can't think of another way out. And rather than shoot you dead, I'd like to discuss ways out with you, okay? So how about the both of us lower our guns? I've got good news and I've got bad news. <laughs> what do you want first? The bad always. I'm a cop for God's sake. The bad news is? I just gained another house. Whether he's got a gun or not. Call me whatever you want. What's the good news? The good news is... Shoot. <laughs> go. Get out of here. Go. 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 <laughs> One down, nine to go, huh? Ordinarily, I wouldn't reason that way, but you've exhibited unusual cooperativeness. Easy on compliments, pal. Still a maniac with a gun. Well, if you take cooperative as a compliment, then I'd say you've had a pretty rough life. First bad guess. My life's been great. Up until lately. You want to talk about it? Don't know. Maybe. Is that what you do? Keep me talking? 
my guard comes down. Usually I find you guys want to talk. And I got the best job in the world because I get to listen. Sure. You seem believable enough. You want to get a cup of coffee, take a load off? I've already left them for a few minutes. Only way out of here is through that door. I know that because I've spent most of the morning looking at maps of this place. drinking coffee. But I'm still holding mine. Maybe I'm quick on the draw. You know, this is a bad idea. What, drinking coffee? No, I never drink the stuff. It makes me hyper. Oh, I see. Well, we wouldn't want that. Well, I got you to smile anyway. Things can't be that bad. Maybe it's one of my last smiles. Come on, don't say that. Pretty sentimental stuff for a cop. Well, cops get a bad rap nowadays. With me, I have become more sensitive over time. The more people I see hurt, the less of that crap I can stomach, you know? This, and the guy who's ready to shoot me. Hey, right now, I'm just a guy drinking coffee. I'm curious about your story. I doubt it'll excite you much. You're living through the most exciting day of my life right now. Okay, then. Help me understand today. This just didn't start this morning. This had to go way back. I'm good at my job, you know. Or was, I should say. What's your job? I was head of accounting. Oh, numbers, huh? I can't stand that nonsense. Well, I can stand it. I have the gift for it. Numbers. Efficiency. Getting the job done. Around here we get monthly reports. Not quarterly, not annually, monthly. Did you do that at your job? Um, they used to, sure, but now I just run my unit, so... So you're the guy making the reports? For worse or for better, yeah. Ever fire anybody? Sure, many times over. It's never fun. I'd bet. But only in your job. You guys get fired for hurting somebody, probably. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes no. You got guys who drink too much, turn in sloppy paperwork, everybody has their reasons. Yeah, everybody except for me. They fired me because management changed. They didn't really like my personality. Why, what's wrong with your personality? You mean, aside from I'm a gun-toting hostage taker? I guess I'm not uh, exciting enough. I don't have that office personality like Sheila. She's bubbly, she's nice, everybody likes her. Not me. She fits in well. Me? I got a two weeks notice, 10 days ago. That very night, went out and bought this. Brought it here every day since. Never thought I'd use it. I thought the fantasy was just enough. Till my boss, Eddie, he, uh... Now, is this the guy that fired you? He said something, uh... condescending to me. Oh, yeah, what was it? If I repeat it, I'll get all worked up. Fair enough. In addition to being a cop, I'm also a psychologist, and I have to tell you, condescension comes from feeling inferior. So that's supposed to make me feel better? I get fired because my boss 
feels inferior. Sure, why not? Wasn't anything you did wrong, like you said. Now I'm supposed to go on for the rest of my life, knowing that this piece of shit asked me if I brought a bag lunch to work. When it, I'm not following you. It was first thing in the morning. There was a group of them standing there. They were talking about getting lunch together. I just so happened to be right next to him. It was a nice way for him to not invite me, yet still sound like a nice, smooth guy. Smooth guy, Eddie. But I guess he didn't expect me to bring my gun. I guess he won't see this coming. Don't do it, Simmons. Both hands up in the air. I assume you have your gun. You assume correct, and I will use it. My story didn't make you enraged at all? Not enraged enough to watch you hurt somebody in an office full of innocence. Gentlemen, I maintain my title as the most efficient man in the office. I'm a go-getter. Once again, I always get the job done. The officer is dead. He talked, I listened, and I decided that my original plan was held a lot better. So, if we don't have any more questions, can we please continue? I can't believe you, Chris. Why would you do this to us? You need to stop and think, Chris. Everybody in this office has been nothing but kind to you. Whatever it is, we could have helped. This is not the answer. Shut up! Shut up! Stop talking, everybody! You and your office clique, you had your chance. Making me a joke? Laughing at me? Well, is it funny now? Is it? Come on, laugh! Let me hear you laugh! Nobody ever laughed at you, Chris. Shut up! Everybody shut up! No more talking! Out of anybody! Got it? Simmons! You're a coward! I was a Marine. I'm gonna take that gun, I'm gonna shove it up your ass! Brave, but very stupid. Now just lay there and bleed. Does anybody else have any questions today? Or can we continue? I do. I do. You don't have to do this, Chris. I'm the one that you had the problem with. It's me, OK? These guys did nothing to you. You should let them go. And this guy over here, he needs an ambulance right now. It's me to get the issue with. Think about it. No. I want you to think There's about no it. There's no thinking. Yeah. The talking is over. You are so right. I killed you. Gee, Chris, you know, it's funny. I never got that memo. 
You think the most efficient guy in the office would have given me that memo? <laughs> there is only one way out of here. The exit sign's been lit. How do you want it? I tried to give you an easier way by talking to you. You chose this. You chose this, Chris. I'm the most efficient guy in this office. This company's got a great house. I'm out. Hey, Lenny, go find that guy, Eddie. Hello, Eddie? I heard How you want... Oh, I'm good. Joe Kelly. It's nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you, sir. Did you guys check in on Simmons? He's got no criminal history. Well, he didn't work for me. I didn't fire him. Who did he work for? He worked for the water company. The more Eddie talked, the more it all made sense. There was nothing wrong with Eddie or the people in the office. They were kind to Chris and welcomed him every time he made a delivery. It caused him to slide into a delusion that he was part of the office. He belonged there. Eddie became concerned for his employees when Chris began to stick around for a half hour or more after each delivery. And then he started showing up in suits. When Eddie told him he'd contact his bosses at the water company if the behavior didn't stop, well, the reality of Eddie's words disrupted Chris's delusion, pushing him to, well, you know the rest. The war in Chris's mind raged, delusion versus reality. Delusion versus reality. And in the end, neither side won. The whole time I thought maybe it was the stress of losing his income or finding another job in this economy. I thought the guy was a sign of the times. Whether times are good or bad, there will always be madmen. And there will always be a guy like me and the team who will be there to take care of business.